I'm Puking Monkey, and we're going to talk about how your car is tracked today. Higher. <laughs> so there's a lot of. Originally, I, I noticed uh, license plate readers uh, about four years ago or so. All right, and there we go. And initially, I didn't know what they were, and it took me a while to figure out what they were, and then I did. And then I built a detector for them, so I knew when I was being tracked. And then I found that wasn't wasn't particularly new to me, but uh, I built a detector so when my Easy Pass, my electronic toll collection was re read, it would notify me. And then I ran across some other things like companies called Enrinix and other places that just track you with your smartphones and even your dumb phones. Um, I did a little. Little research to make sure that you could actually, do you actually have the right to travel? Is this a privilege or is this a right? And it turns out it's a right, and I won't go through it, but that this is this is why it's a right. There's Supreme Court rulings on all of it. Uh, but do you have the right to drive? And that is an absolute no. It's a privilege. You must be licensed. So that's, and so then do you have the right to travel anonymously? And it's generally it's yes, except for three. Three times. It's if you're driving because you have to be licensed. If you're taking a commercial flight, as we all know, to get here, or crossing a national border. Otherwise, you do not need to have ID. Uh, license plate readers, if you're not familiar with them, basically are uh, an OCR on steroids. Uh, they use both uh, infrared and optical to find the license plate, do an OCR on it. Track it where it where it's been found through GPS coordinates and time, and if you get enough of these, uh, enough data points, they can track you wherever you you've been. Uh, here's some pictures of some New York City license plate readers. New York City tends to use a company called LSAG North America, and you can see they're on the back of the car. Uh, the the one on the left is an older model. The one that's a little bit larger is a medium model. It's not the newest. Um, and you can see how they're mounted to aim towards license plates. And you can just see back. And on the back of it, uh, this is this is actually another jurisdiction. This is by federal uh, PIPS system. And you can see it's under the light bar. There are three of them, left, right, and side. And that's LSAG's newest model. And if you go back and look at most of these, they look like they have. I get the other one. They look like they have. T this is this is the old model, which has two cameras in it. There is, there is an uh, there is a visible light and infrared light camera and a bank of infrared LEDs. And if you look on the back of it, it says, "Do not look at this." <laughs> Infrared, infrared uh, LED radiation. The new one appears on the light bar. You can see there's two of them. It looks like it only has a single camera, so I haven't quite figured out if it's just, it's probably just IR. And if you get it just right, you can see this on the back, you can see the nice red glow of the infrared LEDs and they pulsate. Uh, these are fixed cameras at uh, 40 Wall Street, the Trump building. Uh, on Broadway, three cameras, and that's the same three cameras at night that you can see the glow. Uh, when I told people I found all these cameras, they said they see I see them everywhere. They're at every intersection now, and they're, they are they are not. These are not um, license plate readers. These are traffic control cameras. They're just looking for your car instead of uh, the inductor loop in the in the ground, so to change the lights. And these are not license plate readers either. These are red light cameras, and that's a, and it has a big xenon strobe. And so, what's the big deal about capturing license plate data? Because the cops have been running your place forever when they see you. The problem with this is this is now has time, location, and they keep it forever. Well, not forever. A lot, a lot of places have it. Like Maine says, it, they'll keep it like 21 days. New York City will keep it five years. Uh, Jersey will keep it five years, and and I couldn't find data points for anything lower than 2009 in New York City, where they had 108 fixed and 130 mobiles, and I'm sure this number has not gone down. And it's impossible to opt out. 
As you drive by, you get red. Uh, so is it legal to do this warrantless tracking? And it turns out it is. Because there is no reasonable expectation of privacy of your license plate in public. And these are some of the cases of why it is. And then people say, I heard that you couldn't GPS track my car without a warrant, but that's slightly different because the, it, you could, the warrant was needed to put the GPS on the vehicle, not to actually track it. Uh, and the other ones is, uh, was I got questions is that they uh, said they couldn't use technology like to look, use infrared to look into my house. And that is true, but those are constitutionally protected areas. Again, your car on a public street is not a con constitutionally protected area. And so FEMA has been funding this to local police departments for the last couple of years. 100% cost of the license plate readers has been coming from FEMA. This is one of the grants to Vermont for $6.6 .6 million. And this is the Vermont side of it saying, yes, we'll use 100% of the proceeds from this to fund license plate readers. And this is Burlington, Vermont. They purchased two for, I know you can't read it, but I'll read it, for $45,000 for two. Um, so the retention data, uh, New Hampshire has a general ban on this. People in New Hampshire said no, which is great. I heard they're trying to, to ban them in Montana. They're working on that. Maine has actually has a law. They said you cannot cannot store this data for more than 21 days if there's no criminal investigation. In New Jersey, you they must retain all data for five years, and then after five years, it must be destroyed. I'm not sure, not sure how that works. I guess they don't have backups. <laughs> and New York City retains it for five years, even though they have uh, video camera, video feeds uh, that they will, after 21 days, if there's no crime involved in a video feed, they destroy the, they, they claim they destroy the videos. But they will keep the voice plate data for five years. Um, so now they have this data. It's actually public data. Uh, Minneapolis actually released the data to the public and then recanted. And I'll show you some, some of that later. And can it be discoverable because it's data about you? Generally, if there's an investigation about you, you can ask to see what the police have on you. Like in New York, it's called Rosario, and it's statements made by them, but they, the courts have claimed that this is not a statement by any police officer or law enforcement organization, so therefore you cannot discover it. So they can use it to investigate you, but you cannot discover that they're using it to investigate you. And this is, this is what uh, Minneapolis, this is one of the reports from Minneapolis. Minneapolis looks like they released photocopies of records. And as you can see on here, has the first column is the license plate number in text, the time, and the GPS coordinates with a picture of the license plate and the picture of the back of the car. And they had fixed ones too, and this is how they redacted it so you could not find where their fixed license plate readers were that you could just look for them. Um, and, and it may not matter if there's retention or not because there is a commercial market for this. There's a company called Vigilant Solutions and they just, try, and their sole, their sole customer is law enforcement and tow operators, basically the repo guys, use this to find cars to be uh, repoed. And law enforcement will just buy it whether they have it retained or not. And you actually can buy this from a company called TLO.com for $10 a pop. You can get, put in a license plate number and they will tell you where it, where it has been seen. And they say they have 1 billion data points, TLO. Uh, this is not a law enforcement. This is one of the cars from Vigilant. And they have many cameras on the back. And you can see that they have their own branded license plate reader and it's both optical and infrared. Uh, so I went about building it so I wanted to know when my license plate was being read. So I could find the fixed ones and maybe avoid them. It's hard to avoid when there's a lot of them but at least you know they're there because the, they're always on. And I had a lot of, because it was IR, I said this should be easy. I had a lot of failures because I was, you know, built the detector. I'm in full sunlight, have my detector, I'm detecting my remote control for my TV at 80 feet and I can't detect the reader but then I had to go through and use some optical filters to look. The LEDs they're using are not standard infrared like you find in remote controls which is 850 nanometers. They're near IR. They're 735 nanometer 
and so I went through and used some optical filters. It's 720, it blocks everything below uh, 720 nanometers and you get this and you can see it glows but there's still a lot of ambient IR there. So I got another filter that was 730 plus or minus 30 and you can see it just shines right through. So I use that to do it and this is why the, this failed, I'll just describe this graph. The magenta is your standard infrared uh, uh, detector that you would find in commercial stuff. The bright red is the wavelength of where the LSAG North America uh, uh, detector, the, the LEDs transmit, you can see I put up where the visible was and it's just above red. And the green is the filter and the black line is the detection of of a, I, I bought a wide range um, photodiode. And the detector, the basic detector looks like this. I will be at uh, the hardware hacking village at 5 o'clock today and go over the full specs of this. And that's, that's the detector with the, with the filter on it. I just super glued it onto it and put it into a little old DSL splitter case and put some LEDs on it and that's the main thing and this is, this is the proof of concept. It blinks in unison with, with the, and you'll see that's the same frequency that the license plate meter actually it is. And what the, what it's actually doing in the IR, it's not actually pulsating, it's ramping up from zero to full because they're trying to get the best exposure of the plate. It looks to us like a, from there it, it ends up looking like a three, a three hertz frequ uh, frequency on it. So eventually it turned into this because I tried to prevent uh, false positives. So anything between three and nine hertz will set it off, above it it won't, below it it won't and I use the monkey to tell me I got red. Um, so these are the same three but you'll see there's, this is just so you can see in the next video where it is. There's a TGI Fridays on the right and some scaffolding and, and it's, it's right before the light but you get red right near the TGI Fridays because of the way it's angled. And we just travel down Broadway. And there's the scaffolding on the right and the light. Tuesday, Friday, and the monkey screams. <laughs> so, is there anything you can do about your license plates being red? There's some, there's some, some things you can. Uh, Steve Jobs never had plates on his car. He had, he, uh, California had a law that you did not have to have plates for six months. That's now been changed to like 90 days, but he got the same car over and over. And so he got a new car every six months that was identical and he never had plates. So if you have enough money, you don't need plates either in California. Uh, so maybe law enforcement can help us because these are the guys running these devices and they know what's happening. So I went around and found some personal vehicles of some police. I blocked their vice plate numbers, not for their protection but for mine. <laughs> and you could tell this guy, most of them are, they're near, near police stations and they usually have tinted windows, usually don't, they usually don't have inspection stickers, all kinds of things parked illegally so they're easy to find. This guy doesn't have, this guy doesn't have front plates which he's required to. He has a, a, a cover on his license plate that's very dark, another illegal thing and you can see all, all except his windshield, he also has a PBA shield in his windshield. That's not always indicative of a cop but this guy is and the windows are illegally tinted for the state. Uh, this New York guy has those Fresnel lens things that shift on the back. I know he's a cop because he's all, he's all tinted up and he's parked in a MTA police only, otherwise, otherwise he's got a lot of balls. And, uh, <laughs> and, this, and this is both front and back. He uh, you can never get the full license plate number. You'd have to put it together. Uh, this guy's tinted, no front plate back is there and I know it's a cop because he's standing right next to the car. <laughs> uh, I like this one. You see the police car in the background but I only like this because he didn't care about his front plate, cared about the back plate more and I liked it because he has EFF plates. <laughs> I don't think he knows what that is. <laughs> um, 
This was a uniformed officer making a right turn that I just happened to capture, and he's driving with his tailgate down. And he has a piece of wood preventing what's ever in the back from rolling out. And he also has stickers that says New Jersey State Police and Hero, which is another police organization. And I said, is that common? And you find out, yes. So this is another police. And you can see him. He's standing near the car as well on the top photo. He's got the blue line front plate. And even his windshield is tinted black. And he has his license, he has his tailgate down too, so you can't read it. So I said, maybe he's just parked there because the other guy was actually driving. This guy's parked. Maybe he was getting something out. Uh, a few days later, found it again, different spot, tailgate's down. Same car. Uh, another one, it's illegally parked, completely black, no inspection sticker, no front plate. And he puts, and he also uh, as well has, has a thick, uh, a darker cover on his back plate. Uh, this was the only one that scared me because he came out as I was taking the picture and said, what are you doing? I said, this car is absolutely beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I'm glad it was a nice car and not a piece of crap. <laughs> uh, but again, thin blue line front plate, completely blackened windows, windshield, everything, and PBA license plates. And it's, and it's, it's it, it does it look as thing, but it also has a black shield over the back plate. And so what these cops do is typical of what I've just said, but you can't do any of this. This will get you pulled over in most jurisdictions unless you're a police. They can do it because no, no cop's going to actually give them a ticket. They're going to get uh, professional courtesy. And so you could try and do temp tags, but you run out of time. And temp tags are always great because New York temp tags are not good in Massachusetts. They will impound your car as is unregistered and uninsured, and then you have to tow it home. Uh, they don't show up because they're pieces of paper and they tend to have not, you know, the registrations tend to be, just ran, you know, kind of one-use numbers. And I ran across these temp tags. I have no idea how they are. It just has an expiration date. There's no number and it seems to be from a company. So, or maybe they just don't care. Or maybe it's Georgia doesn't care because one's from Georgia, the other one doesn't say anything. Uh, so you get 90 days of use out of that and most people can't go through that. Um, you can also try and get commercial plates so they're not registered to you but that's a very thin veil and there's problems with commercial plates because in New York commercial, commercial vehicles have a different rule set than personal vehicles. As you can see, police checkpoint, all commercial vehicles must stop and this is not just to check your documents, they look inside each, each truck. And since it's not usually theirs, they always comply. Sure, you want to look in the back of my truck? Sure, go ahead. Because they just want to get their job done. Uh, so the other things that are hard for the LPR, so North Carolina actually took a bunch of plates and ran them through to see what LPRs had difficulty reading. If you have a non-reflective plate, it's, almost, it's, in, it's, it's invisible at night, completely invisible. And it's difficult during the day. And non-reflective plates are very uncommon now. And if you decide you can remove your reflectivity, but this is a crime in California to do this. And if you're in Massachusetts, you will fail inspection. It's one of their checks and you'll have to get a new plate and go through. Low contrast plates, you know, the, 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 the color of the letter is close to the color of the background it has trouble with. Red characters it tends to have trouble with. And if you have three or more stacked characters, because they tend to be small, it tends to miss those. And if you put registration stickers like Missouri, I think, uh, puts a registration right in the middle of the plate near the, near the letters and that tends to screw it up too. So they have trouble with that. And if you have eight digits or more, narrow letters are not great for it. And in, great if you don't have a pl front plate, only read half the time. Uh, these, these are the states that have <coughs> the, the greens are the states that have one plate, red or have two. It's, and Nevada is special because they can't, can or can't, depends on, there's some rules for it. Um, and these are the states with legal non-reflective plates that are still, still valid, not very many. Uh, you could also try your manufacturer plates, but then this is, this is the, this is the, the date of the old, of the youngest car you could have. For like California, you, you, you'd only go to 1962 and, so that doesn't work either. Um, see a lot of obscure plates. 
you know, people will use, whether they're doing this on purpose or not is unknown to me, but this, this causes problems. You get salt spreaders, plows, monkeys, more salt spreaders, you know, tailgates. Um, not sure what the front of one of those is, but the bicycle things all makes it impossible to to get a read. But this is, these are all these can all get you a citation. They tend to be not movie violations, obscure plates. Like in Jersey, it's a hundred dollar fine, no court appearance. You just pay it and move on. Um, or you can get some plates that is not your number. This is University of Michigan plates. <clears throat> But the in leading M on both of those is actually not part of the registration number. They can still get you because they have a full number. It will be eventually figured out. You can do bumper guards if you're parked, especially if you're parked because they, they read them when you're parked. They just drive down the street reading all the plates. Uh, more bumper guards. Uh, but don't drive. I've seen people driving down the road with that covered. That'll get you pulled over. And the other, the other worry with these, if you have actually no plates on your car, every jurisdiction, no plates cars are abandoned and subject to confiscation. Uh, you can legally, if you have easy pass in your jurisdiction, you can usually legally obscure your front plate. There's usually a law for it, and there is one exception, and that's for the external easy pass reader. And this makes it hard to be read on the front. And since it's OCR, what do you think? Do you think CAPTCHA? But don't do this. These are government documents. You'll be charged with tampering. So I built a, a camera to to uh, see what <coughs> what the uh, the, uh, the license plate readers are seeing, but most most commercial infrared cameras are 850. So I put I bought the 750 nanometer LEDs to see what what showed up with that, as well as 850s on it. And it turns out the 735 LEDs, uh, the 420 guys like this for grow lights. So I'm on some other list now too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an old license plate and you can see you can actually buy these things that say, that's the bottom one, that say, hey, no red light camera. You know, you put this on the, put this on the back, it's clear. It basically blocks above 850 nanometers. But since the license plate reader is below that, you can see the first one, it's just regular. This is with this, the, the middle one's actually with the 730 and the one is the 850. So yeah, if it's 850, these kind of work, but they're illegal as well. And you can see what they do on a, Couple of other, other plates. Um, so, and I ran across this kind of by accident using using the little camera on plates during the winter time, since I'm from a place that salts their roads. And so, that's this is a this is a license plate with a whole bunch of salt on it. Uh, visibly, it doesn't look too much different on the top. This is with a flash, and that's with the IR. And that's just a, that's a moderate amount of salt because it looks like the salt absorbs enough of the IR to make it unreadable. And that's with a, a lot of salt. Um, I don't want to go through those. You could get stacked characters. These are states just have stacked characters. You want the one like the New York that has NYP in three because that makes it very difficult for it to read. The Jersey one isn't so great because they're half height characters, easy to detect. Uh, you could also get special characters like hearts and ampersands that are not part of your plate number and they tend to get OCR'd and sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't and only a few states have those. Um, or you could just change your plates as much as possible. So this, this won't uh, avoid detection but you won't have as big of a history. And this is the cost to change your license plate in these states. If it's white, I couldn't figure it out. Like Florida, it's, it's county by county. But one of them, I think it was Mississippi, it's $1.25. You could change your plates every day at lunch. <laughs> if it weren't for the DMV taking four hours. <laughs> so many of them are very reasonably priced, less than 10 bucks. Um, these are the states with eight character plates. Not very many. And that's kind of it for the license plate reader. Then I kind of moved on to the EasyPass, which is electronic toll collection tags. It's 
because they're always on and most people just stick them in the window and forget about them. All electronic code collection in the United States is at 915 megahertz and there are multiple incompatible protocols all over the place. And these are a couple of them. But it's basically RFID with batteries and some of them don't have them anymore. It's, and so I took mine apart. It has a nice battery in it. Put a switch on it and figured out the, the current draw when it was being read and when it was being not. You shouldn't do this because it's not your property. You have to return these. And so I just basically built a, a, a low side uh, voltage detection and when it went off, it would just set off the timer and make the cow. It says to moo cow. And the circuit integrated into it, put on off switch on it so I can turn off it while I'm driving and drove around and found where it got red. So this, this place, there's no tolls near here, but it would always go off underneath this sign. So I stopped at the side of the road and looked backwards and it's hidden. It may not be on purpose, but you can see there's two there's two readers right behind the sign. They're white little white boxes are the antennas, and these aren't hidden. They just they're just out there. And this this is the access to the Lincoln Tunnel from the Jersey side. If you're up top, you, you're committed to going through the tunnel to pay the toll. And there's three here, and you can see the two up top under the Easy Pass things. It reads you, but that, that's not going to charge you the toll. You will get charged the toll at the toll, and you also get read right at the entrance of the tunnel. And they also kind of want to know, because this is the last exit, there's one right at the light at, at the end, at the exit for the last exit in Jersey. So they're, it's just being watched. Uh, you drive around New York City and you'll see, you'll see them hanging from lights. These, and I made it easy to see. And another one. I got tired taking pictures of them. Yeah, these are, these are, these are from a company called Transcore. Now Transcor can read all the all the all the uh, protocols, including the Easy Pass. Easy Pass was cl a closed protocol until a few months ago, but they had reverse engineered it. But it'll read it'll read any the Sun Pass from Florida, and that's why New York City likes it. They get everybody. But I didn't like uh, after a while. I didn't like that I had to be detected. It's kind of like a ping. So for me to find out if I was being read. I had to give away my position as well. So I decided to get a 915 megahertz radio, use an Arduino, and put it in a tin and with a little little meter on it. And we'll do a proof of concept here. The Arduino one is in the tin on the left, the cow on the left. The one on the right is the one that I had built and we'll go by the, that first. And right under the sign, as as predicted, it gets red. And just uh, we'll go through the link. We'll go through the Holland Tunnel here. Oh, uh, may maybe we'll do that again to go through to show that a real easy pass works works just fine. <laughs> so this is this is that 42nd and 8th, that first one I showed you. I circled the tag and you see the cow in the bottom. He's already going off. And I did a run down 7th Avenue from 44th Street, Times Square area, to Madison Square Garden, 34th Street, and you'll see how often it gets red. It's going already. <laughs> Move until it moves only a couple times, but as long as the nose is on, it's being, it's being read. This is speed, sped up a bit because it's like a five minute journey to 90 seconds. Still on. Traffic, so it went off a bit. Oh,
it goes off as soon as you turn on 31st Street. And it, and it remained off until the, the exit for the Lincoln Tunnel, which is not a toll. Which is not a toll, but this is exiting from Manhattan at the, at the Lincoln Tunnel. Um, the New York State Department of Transportation absolutely admits that, yes, they do read your easy pass, but I didn't expect it as much at every intersection. Um, so they, they say they do this for travel times, but I've never seen travel times in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> and what do they do with this data? Since they have your data, do they retain it? Do they give it to the NSA? That's yes, because the New York Times said they did. I don't <laughs> And so what do you do with this? This one's kind of easy. If, if you have, have these things, you, you, put it in, in, you put it in the anti-static bag they gave you. It can't be read. Or if you have a sticker, you're going to have to build a Faraday cage around it and put the sticker in that. And I got that idea from uh, a car rental company because they have these little fold-down things so you can just pop it up and it won't be read. And, but if you do that, just like you'll see, you saw it gets read right before the tolls, at the toll, and after the toll. So if you're doing that, you, you're, not, you're not showing up at these other places. You may be a person of interest if you're only seen at the toll. Uh, then we come to your tires. Back in 2000, Firestone had a had a strike and replacement workers build the, uh, make their tires and they tended to blow up. So something got passed called tread and to do this they wanted to track who made the tires and because there was never any there was no there's no serial number on tires they're all molded the mold from 10 years ago was the mold that's the same today so you couldn't tell if it was 10 years ago or yesterday they got made so this came through so there's a couple of things in your in in your wheels first one is the tire pressure monitoring system and that's not in the tire that's part of your rim it's on it's on the back side of the valve stem and this transmits at 315 megahertz and it's unique per, per rim. This is not so bad because to get your ID, somebody has to, has to come to your car and get the ID, but they could. And then, then the tire manufacturers are putting RFIDs in the sidewalls themselves to track. There's a unique serial number in each of them. Michelin loses 915 megahertz. Goodyear could not get that to work because rubber absorbs RF very well. And, and they were using originally 125. I don't know if they actually fixed their 950 megahertz. And if you get your tires from Ford, Chrysler, they put the VIN number in the tire. So now the VIN number that goes to your state, now it's easier to track. I know of no one that's actually doing this, but if I were somebody that wanted to track, I'd be putting sensors at sides of roads. And this is, this is the treasure, uh, tire pressure monitoring system. This was actually a picture showing a run flat tire. But as you can see in where they cut away the run flat, that's actually the transmitter. It's a little battery. It's like, it's like the easy pass. It has a little bit circuitry with a battery in it. Uh, um, so what can you do about these? These are tough because you can't really take your tires off and put them back on yourself. You need somebody else to do that. And if you disable your, your tire pressure monitoring system, you will have that light on your dashboard the entire time. And if you have automobile inspection, you probably won't pass it because I know in Jersey, if you have any indicator light on, check engine, low tire pressure, seat belts, indicator doesn't work, you will not pass inspection. So you might want to try and jam it at the time. I'm, I, I was unsuccessful at doing that. But that's for later. And you can try and EMP pulse the, maybe the, the chips in the sidewall of the tires, but they absorb, rubber absorbs RF very well. Um, and there's some other RFD things around. Parking passes, you'll find them. They're hang tags. Um, you could just get a radio to see if that's what happens. If they're, you know, if it's just a hang tag and something automatically opens a gate for you, it's probably, it's probably an RFID. And there is a community that used their parking permits because they had so much counterfeit parking stickers for the street. They put RFIDs in them and put them on the cars. Uh, you want to park on the street, you're going to be detected too. Uh, it's tough to get around that. I heard Italy is doing this and Texas was going to put them in their inspection stickers, but I don't know if that actually passed. Uh, so if you need to not use those if you can. And then comes to 
this company I came across, I'm not sure I came across it, it was a company called Enrinix. And this is, they collect position data from 100 million devices. Google Maps uses them for their traffic flow. Six out of the auto uh, manufacturers with built in nav uses Enrinix. Eight of the 12 top navigation apps in the iStore use the, this guy, these, these people. And they even have, they even track dumb phones with uh, contracts with the cell phone companies. And they originally started by tracking commercial truck fleets. So they have lots of data on you. If you, if you use any of these apps, you're giving it to them and they know who you are. So at the end of the day, you need to salt your plate, bag your tag, zap jam your tires, you have to turn off all your electronic devices. And that's it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll take any questions if people have them. Yeah, his question is lighting the back of the car with LEDs. Yeah, you can do that to block it. You're going to need both of them. But many states have, if you jam a red light camera, you have committed a crime. No, no, no. The, the, the back of the lights? No. It's, it's, it's usually open worded saying if you, if you can defeat a red light camera, any means, any way, you have committed a crime. So they're illegal, and they, and if I and if I was the LPR guys, and you think you have IR and you use the 850, if I was LSAG, I don't know if they do. I'd put the I'd put the same blocker that you put on your plate to block the 850, and I won't even see your LEDs because seven 740s are kind of uncommon. Oh sure. Uh, wait wait, he's coming. Thank you. Uh, you stated the uh, toll collection is shared with NSA. Uh, does that also apply to LPRs? Uh, I don't know that. Uh, the only reason I know it was shared is because New York Times said in one of the articles that right after Snowden that they that the NSA did get Easy Pass data. They didn't say that the Easy Pass was collected everywhere. Most people, when they see that, say, "Oh, it's at the tolls, big deal." But it's it's much more than that. But LPR data tends to be government data, so I wouldn't see why not. Especially since FEMA is funding it, it's probably part of their. Hey, you have to for this money. We want we, we want your data too. But I have no no documents saying that. Uh, how about Fresnel lenses or dust covers? Well, that, uh, all, all these things. Every every work? every jurisdiction has an obscure plate law. So if you obscure your plate. Yeah. To it depends on the jurisdiction. Most of them, like it, like if if it's if the red light camera can't get a, one of us Pennsylvania. That's the one I I knew well because it actually says basically it's so broad. Anything you do to defeat a red light camera is illegal. And it's a misdemeanor, and you but you it's more it's more than a moving violation. It's a you know it's a crime. So that fr that would fall under to that. I think California has the same has the same law too. But don't quote me on that. I, I read a lot of state laws and they all start to blur together. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, I would suggest you check your sources on the New York Times article as far as the uh, availability of the toe tag reader ID to NSA. Um, I know the people who built the system. Yeah. The data, we don't keep any of those data. Is, is that New York City dot or? New York, New York City dot okay. along with a number no, no, of the other system. The DOT, the last thing they want to do is to know who the hell is driving that car. Okay. So the, the New York Times to publish that but I, it, when they said they just said easy pass data. They didn't say if it was New York dot data or toll, actually, actually toll All toll data. tag datas are scrubbed. So I would double check that source on New York Times. I could get and you also the, with the NREX data. Uh, you might want to double check that source too because I challenge you to find anyone at NREX that can pinpoint a vehicle. I'm not saying they can't but I'm saying they're, all, all I'm letting you know is that it's being tracked at this point. You're being tracked in your Android phone but I think Google probably has a better chance of identifying you than NREX. Where do you want to go? Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if you've done any experiments with putting like a, 
coat of like clear coat paint over a layer of salt just to stabilize it so it doesn't wash off? No, I actually want it to wash off because let's say you need to go through a car inspection. You have to wash it off. But yeah, these are up to I'm not I'm not saying to do any of this actually. <laughs> this is just <laughs> ideas. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm not, and I'm not sure how they, if, if that's even, how they even detect if it's reflective or not, right? Because it just, you know, you know, a little laser beam and says I get enough back, it's fine. At a corner, uh, you know, all I know is that's part of their inspection criteria in Massachusetts. Is there any state law that says you must keep your license plate clean? Like, what if there's mud or? Yeah, actually, that's that's the same as the obscured plate law. Uh, every state has an obscured plate law. You cannot put mud or stuff on it. it has to typically it have to be visible, and that's why I kind of like the salt because it, visibly it doesn't look like it. And in states that have winters, it's kind of common to have salted plates. Not probably very common out here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my question is, how did you salt your plates to maintain deniability? You just uh, water, salt, super saturated, pour it on the plate, off the car, let it dry. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming up and speaking with us. Uh, I just had a quick question about the data and how it's available. Um, if we can contact our local counties or um, and get this information for free as You're, far as when our plates were read? Um, I don't know how – they typically will not give this data out. Minneapolis, I only know they did it briefly and then they recanted and said, no, we're not going to provide this anymore. Okay. Um, so I know of no other place that it was actually providing the data available to people. But the company, that TLO.com, you can purchase it. But that's that's not – that's not government data. That's privately collected data, which there is no laws against any of that. Okay. Thank you. Maybe halfway. Yeah. You put a lot of effort into investigating state by state the uh, rules for changing license plates, and I appreciate that. But I was wondering what the perceived advantage is. How is it any better uh, than a dynamic IP? You just you have less of a history. You could still, if people have a routine that's every day of the week, you're you're detected very quickly. But they could go back and say, well, you know, he's only done this for a week. If you change your plates every week. But then, I, but they also have all your previous plates. That, but I don't think that's a common practice to change your plates a lot. So they might not say, "Oh, let's go back and look for all his old plates." But it, it would be trivial to once it's figured out if that's what's happening to do that query. Oh, here's his ten plates. Just run them all. Do you know of any kind of pay, um, paint that you can use on the infrared spectrum that would be transparent on the? Uh, on the visible spectrum. So yeah, uh, MythBusters did this and busted it. So I I didn't go down that uh, that road because they said they had a bunch of things for a red light camera thing. They had some sort of spray that did not work. So and I saw it advertised. I did not purchase it nor, nor try it. And that's usually for um, speeders trying to detect, they're trying to avoid the laser detectors. A lot of the questions here are focused on um, trying to prevent reading of your plate, and as you mentioned, yeah. every state has an uh, obscure license plate law. What about a different approach? What about feeding it bad data, lots and lots of bad so, data? Yeah, so that's one of the things, yeah, I, I had things. So it, it, the detector is trying to find your plate. So if you get some reflective material with non-reflective numbers on it, it will probably still find your plate, and, but will read all the other bad data along with it. So your plate, you will still probably be captured, but as well as you know your bumper sticker that you know, you know your, that you try to say semicolon one equals one to try and dump it on it, but you got to do that in like eight characters. <laughs> um, my question is about uh, sanding the license plates. I have a bunch of people in Arizona that sand them down, all everything around the uh, yeah. numbers. What's that about? 
they sand, well, they leave the sand on it or are they actually like sanding it to remove it? Sanding the plate will remove the reflectivity. Yeah, it has the numbers though on it, right? It's visibly. Yeah, the, one of the w ways the detectors are looking to find the plate on the back of the car, because let's say you have 100 bumper stickers, it needs to find your plate and all the noise, and one of the ways it does that is by the reflectivity. All right.